In Creo Parametric, you can define the CNC toolpaths in order to manufacture your parts. One of these kinds of toolpaths is a volume roughing sequence. And like the name implies, this is intended to remove a large volume of material. And this is very convenient for mold cavities like this particular part or pockets or slots that you want to machine. Before I create my volume roughing sequence though, I need to create some reference geometry to help define the volume that needs to be removed. In this particular situation, I'm going to use a mill window. Let me click on the mill window command from the manufacturing group. The first thing that I need to do is select a plane that I want to define the window on. Let me turn on my datum plane display. I'm going to sketch or I'm going to create my mill window right on the plane called retract. And currently it is using the silhouette of the model, but I'm going to use the chain option instead. I'm going to grab the edges of the workpiece. Let me click in the collector for selecting the chain. I will select one edge of the workpiece, then hold down the shift key and then select that. And now we are getting the projection of that chain of edges onto our window plane. This is good. Later on, I'm going to come back and change one of the different options. Right now, it's using inside the window contour, but let's use that for now. Oh yeah, let me go to the properties tab. I can rename this if I want. I'm going to use this as a volume window. And so now I can hit the check mark and my mill window is created. Now we can click on the volume rough command and let me zoom out a little bit and zoom down or rotate the model to look down on the part a bit. And let's see, the first thing that we need to define is our machining reference and I will select that mill window that I just created. And for the tool, right now it is using the tool from the previous sequence which was a three inch face mill. Let me go to the ball end mill, the one inch one, and ask me if I want to copy the parameters from the cutting data. And let's use yes. I'll change that later on. If we want to, we can click on the tool preview. It is just showing the overall outline of the tool. If we go to the tool manager, it allows us to see what this tool actually looks like. This is a solid tool. I like using solid tools when I can because it gives you more accurate interference checks and gouge checks and it also looks better when you are playing the path. Let me cancel out of this dialog box and let's see the next thing in here. For the references, there are some other collectors for excluded surfaces, loops to close, scallop surfaces and approach wall chains. That helps you to adjust the volume that's going to be machined. Let me go to the parameters tab. And so here are some of the different parameters. And so for example, we have cut feed and for this particular one, let me use a much smaller value of 100. Let's see anything else that I want to specify in here. It's using a step over of 0.5. I'm fine with that. We also have a max depth depth. Maybe I want to use a quarter inch for that one. Scan type, type three, that is fine. I'll mention that in a moment. And let's see, for a clear distance, maybe I want to use half an inch based on the location of the retract plane. And for the spindle speed, maybe it's more like 600 for the machine that I am using. So these are some of the basic parameters for this sequence. If you click on this icon, this will bring up a dialog box. And again, right now we're just seeing the basic parameters, but there is an all button and this will show you all the different parameters that are available to you. As I mentioned in other videos, the parameters are really the bread and butter of configuring your NC sequences. This will allow you to get exactly the motion that you want. So I'm going to jump into a slide deck 
for a moment in order to discuss some of the other different parameters. Okay, for volume roughing, first there are a bunch of different parameters that relate to how each slice is going to be machined. And so in the basic parameters, I had mentioned the rough option, and that controls whether you are roughing, profiling, doing some kind of a combination, whether you're going to rough first and then profile or profile and then rough, if you're gonna do any cleanup, if you're pocketing or doing faces only. You can also specify the cut angle relative to your zero. You also have different options for the scan type. And this is especially important when you have multiple pockets in the volume that you are machining. There are also a bunch of different parameters related to high speed machining, like constant load, spiral maintain cut type, and spiral maintain cut direction, and follow hard walls. Pertaining to your lateral motion and the depth of the machining, you have parameters like step over, number of passes, and tool overlap. And if there's a conflict between those three, then it's going to use the minimum amount of step over. You can also specify the bottom scallop height, which must be less than or equal to the cutter radius. And also you can reduce the amount of step over distance with step over adjust. For the depth, you can specify the minimum step depth and the maximum step depth. You can also specify the scallop height on the walls. Oops, looks like I duplicated minimum step depth down there at the bottom. And for your stock allowance that you're leaving, you have rough stock allow for your roughing passes, prof stock allow for your profiling passes, and bottom stock allow, which pertains to both your roughing and profiling passes. Okay, let's jump back over to Creole Parametric. Okay, I did not change any of the different parameters in the dialog box, so I will cancel out of there. There are a bunch of other different tabs for configuring your motion. For example, if you want to adjust the retraction from the retract plane, you can also define start and end points. You can also define a traverse plane. You can specify whether you want to use a cutting tool or not. You can customize the tool motion by adding in other additional steps. From the process tab, you can either calculate the time or you could specify a time. This is used in Pro Process for NC for coming up with your process plans for NC manufacturing. And then the properties tab, this is where you can change the name of the feature. You can also add a comment and depending on your different options, the comment can be output to the cutter location file. Let me go back to the references tab just so that my properties tab isn't blocking the main part of my graphics area. So that's everything for setting up our volume roughing sequence. This button allows you to view your cutter location data. And you can see that this is actually going to generate a lot of data for this particular volume roughing. There's a lot that's going on here. Let me close that. And then from this drop down list, we can take a look at our material removal simulation. I will click on that one. And now it is doing some math. And for the precision, let me jump this up. I'm going to go from low to medium. And it's going to say, yeah, it's going to reset the simulation. So now it's going to do some additional thinking. Let me go to the play simulation button. And I'm going to leave the display speed where it is just because this can take a bit of time to run, especially for all the different slices it's going to do in here. Let me just adjust it a little bit. Now I will hit the play simulation button. You can see a preview of what's being generated. And one issue that I'm seeing is that we're getting some material left over on the right hand side of the workpiece. So that is not great. That indicates that I'm probably going to want to make some adjustments. So I'll take a note of that. Let's watch the rest of the simulation.
Okay, we see a flash of red. Red, you can figure out, is probably not good. In this case, we are getting an indication that our cutting tool is actually gouging into our fixture. And we can actually bring up the gouge report in here and we can see that, yep, we are getting some gouges in our run. So we need to make some adjustments. Let me close out of there and close out of the material removal simulation. I am going to hit the check mark out of the volume milling sequence because one adjustment I can make after turning off my datum plane display is adjusting the mill window. So I'm going to go to the mill window and click on it with the left mouse button and then choose edit definition from the mini toolbar. If I go to the options tab, we can choose to machine with the tool on the window contour itself. So that's good. Be aware that there are other different controls like offsetting the window uniformly or adjusting the geometry collection within the window. But let me just do the one option for on the window contour. And next up, let's edit definition of the volume milling sequence. I will go to the parameters and let's go to the bottom stock allowance. Let's specify a small value in there. So it's gonna hopefully not drive through the entire part. So now that we've made those two changes, we'll go to the material removal simulation. It is doing some calculations. And rather than change the precision, because I've already showed this once, let's play the simulation. And let me, I mean, I'm going to crank up the display speed a little bit, seeing as we've already seen this once. Now let's hit the play button. And we can see that it is no longer uh, going through the model. Oops, we still had a situation where it was gouging. I thought that bottom stock allow would have taken care of that one. Hold on, let's close out of this and hit the close button out of the material removal. Okay, let's try one more thing. Let's go to the references tab and let's try closing a loop. And for the loop to close, maybe I don't want it going all the way through here. I could try creating another operation later on where we machine that. So let me try selecting, I'll select an edge here and then use the shift key. Trying to get a tangent chain, try to select as much as I can. And I'm holding down the shift key still and still trying to get my individual pieces in here. Okay, so now we have a tangent chain. Let me hit the check mark. And so now, oops, I checked marked out of the feature. Let's edit definition. And so I've got the tangent chain in the loops to close. Let's go back to our material removal simulation. And let's play the simulation. Once again, I'm going to crank up the speed. And so we can see it. There we go. Now we did not plunge through our workpiece and into our uh, fixture. So that is good. So I can close the play simulation. Let's close out of the material removal simulation and hit the check mark. And let's see, I no longer need to see the window, so I'm going to hide it. But last thing to show you, I can right click on the volume milling sequence. We can choose to play the path and let's hit the play button. And that way we can view the motion that it is going to use with our actual solid tool. And you can see the path in red. So there you have it. That's how you can set up a volume roughing NC sequence for manufacturing your parts.